three, two, one, zero. Yesterday, SpaceX did their first ever high altitude test of a Starship prototype, and it was incredible. So I want to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what happened, why it's important, and what is next for this incredible spacecraft. I'll put timestamps down below so you can either watch the whole thing or just jump to whatever section you are actually interested in watching. Okay, so I know a lot of you already know a lot about Starship, but for those that need it, here's a quick 30 second recap of what Starship even is. Okay, 30 seconds on the clock, let's go. Starship is SpaceX's answer to affordable access to space and interplanetary travel. It's the first true attempt at a spaceship to take humans to Mars and further from home. Its design has changed multiple times, but right now it's made up of two stages, the super heavy rocket and the Starship spacecraft, which together will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever made. Thanks to the Starship being powered by six Raptor engines and the super heavy booster being powered by around 28. Oh, and they'll both also be able to land and be fully reusable, which is the first time that's ever been done. But if you want to learn more about some more specific details, I'll make sure to leave some great links down below from people like Everyday Astronaut and Marcus House, so you can do just that. But just keep in mind that this thing is big. Altogether as tall as an Airbus A380 and a Boeing 757 stacked on top of each other. Okay, so over the past couple of years, SpaceX has began to create some prototypes and do a whole load of tests. There's been pressure tests and engine tests, sometimes leading to a few fireworks, but there's also been some test flights, including two tests and a hop up to 150 meters of the Starhopper prototype with a single Raptor engine. And then this year, the SN5 and SN6 prototypes, which just look like massive grain silos, both took to the skies up to 150 meters, also using just one single Raptor engine. Which brings us to SN8, or Snate, which is the first prototype to have three Raptor engines strapped to it and the first to have its nose cone and four aerodynamic fins attached. After some successful and one not so successful test fires of the engines in October and November, it was ready to take to the skies. And then after multiple reschedules and two aborted test flights later, it was actually ready to take to the skies. So, the Starship SN8 prototype fired up its engines at 10.45 p.m. UTC on the 9th of December, 2020. And amazingly, this behemoth left the ground and started climbing. And just to remind you, this thing is the size of a 15-story building. Now, after one minute and 44 seconds, one Raptor engine shut off, followed by the second at three minutes, 14 seconds after launch. And this was probably kind of like a throttle down to control the amount of power that was actually pushing this rocket higher and higher. Then at around 12.5 kilometers in altitude at four minutes, 40 seconds after launch, the third engine shut off and the rocket's fins changed angle to flip it onto its belly to start what's called the belly flop maneuver. It coasted down towards the ground like this until two Raptor engines fired back up and gimbaled to force the rocket back to an upright position. Then it went for landing with those two Raptor engines firing to slow it down. At which point at least one of the Raptor engines started to emit a green plume and the Starship hit the ground and exploded in a massive fireball. So honestly, that was actually a huge success, like genuinely. And that was probably one of the most incredible things I have ever seen. Here's a little clip of my reaction to prove that. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's gonna work. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! It blew up! Oh my god! So according to Elon Musk, the pressure in the fuel header tank was too low for the landing burn to work correctly. So essentially the Raptor engines couldn't generate enough thrust to slow SN8 down enough before making contact with solid ground, which led to the big boom. It's possible that the green flame is also explained by this, with the fuel tank issue leading to the engines basically destroying and eating themselves. So that green flash could be from like engine components that are made from copper that are just burning up. Okay, so why is this such a huge moment and why is a test that ended in a massive explosion actually a success? 
So as I said, this was the first ever high altitude test of a Starship prototype. And it was the first time they had tested a flight with three Raptor engines attached, which are like some of the most advanced rocket engines ever developed. There were a few other things being tested, but by far the most exciting thing to me was testing out that belly flop maneuver. This was the first time that any spacecraft has tried this. Let me explain the general idea. The technique uses the entire broadside, or the, uh, the belly of the spacecraft, against the atmosphere in order to create as much drag as possible and reduce its speed as much as possible. This is known as aero braking. The four fins are used almost like the arms and legs of a skydiver, changing angle to control the spacecraft's orientation as it falls through the atmosphere and then it fires up its engines in the final moments to perform an upright flip so it can land on its legs. And this is gonna be a crucial process to work in order to be able to actually land on Mars, which as we know, this is what Starship is really being built for. But if you wanna learn more about the process in more detail and like why it's really needed and potentially some alternatives to it, I'll make sure to leave some links to some really great videos explaining those things down below in the description. But how incredible did that whole maneuver look? When that third engine shut down and those flaps started doing their thing, I went pretty nuts. And then watching this huge vehicle just float down, almost like a blimp, was just one of the most surreal things I've ever seen. So massive congratulations to everybody at SpaceX because they have just made history yet again. This is one of the most fundamental systems of the Starship that needed to be proven to be feasible, which apart from in those few final moments of landing, it has definitely done, which is just incredible. How do you reckon it would feel to be inside Starship when it does that final vertical flip? I'm pretty sure I would throw up. No, uh, I, I would definitely throw up. <laughs> this whole thing was a clear display of one of SpaceX's key philosophies, development through iterative design, essentially making as many prototypes as possible and just learning by doing, collecting data from launches and tests and then applying what they've learned to new, slightly tweaked designs in the future. Which is a really great idea that I can get behind and I'm sure you can probably get behind as well, especially seeing the pace that they are going with this. They really do embrace failure as like an opportunity to learn. Even releasing a video a few years back that was just a highlight reel of all of their failures, which are also known as rapid unscheduled disassemblies. So no matter what the results of this test were ever going to be, it was always going to be a way to collect data and apply what they've learned to future designs. Which means that after this, what is next is more tests. The next prototype called SN9 is already fully stacked with all four fins attached and at the time that you're watching this video, it might already have its rocket engines installed. So it might be completely ready to go for a flight test of its own. And there are actually loads of other Starship prototypes being manufactured at the same time. This image from Brendan Lewis on Twitter is the latest of their weekly updates that show what prototype is at what stage in the SpaceX facility. The pace that they're creating these things is just crazy fast. And Elon Musk has said in the past that he wants to be manufacturing one each week and maybe even as fast as a 72 hour turnaround. And on top of all this, the first super heavy booster is also already being built, which could lead to orbital test flights as soon as early next year. Damn. Now look, I am going to make more videos about Starship and its development in the future, including a video about the Lunar Starship that SpaceX is developing for trips to the moon. Because this is all just too exciting to not talk about. It is a prime example of something that can just get people excited about the future. Which as you know is something that I'm trying to do on this channel, get people excited again about the world and the future. And the fact that SpaceX is so open with their development process, it's just really cool. It's kind of like opening up space exploration for the public like never before. So thanks for watching and expect more videos about all of this stuff really, really soon. As always, thank you so much to all of my incredible Patreon supporters. You make quick turnaround videos just like this possible. So thank you so much. Consider subscribing if you're not already and I will see you on the next one, my friends.